My name is Cornelius van Dorp, and I'm a graduate of Auckland University School of Medicine in New Zealand in 1985. So I now have 34 years of um, medical practice under my belt. The first seven years of my career, I worked for Greenpeace as a ship's doctor and Antarctic base camp doctor, and I overwintered at the Greenpeace base uh, for the year of 1987. While there, I did a lot of research into cold climate medicine, and one of the papers I discovered in my reading was one that looked at the life, of, life expectancy of Antarctic overwinterers. And uh, what I found very surprising about this paper was that it stated that uh, those people who spent one year overwintering on the Antarctic ice cap on average lived 10 years longer than their peers. I thought about that and, uh, and I thought it might be due to the extra melatonin secretion during the six months of darkness uh, um, in, in Antarctic and that was in fact the subject of my own research over a couple of years but I could not find any confirming evidence of this so it remained a mystery to me. Why did Antarctic overwinterers live 10 years longer than their peers? on average. My year on ice radically changed my life and my priorities in life and uh, on return to civilization I I continued working for Greenpeace for another six years and uh, as a ship's doctor and uh, did several voyages back to the Antarctic and I also started on to an amazing journey of synchronicity about which I wrote a series of three books the first one being Crystal Mission, then Trail of the Hawk, and then A Search for the Feathered Serpent. This journey took me to some radically different places, and during which I stayed for a while in the New Age community of um, Sedona, Arizona. While staying there in 1990, um, as I reported in the Crystal Mission, I attended a talk by a gentleman by the name of Wes Bateman who maintained that he'd been told that the Earth had been impacted by an asteroid or a meteor a few thousand years before Christ, which had introduced a massive amount of deuterium into the Earth's oceans and uh, water supply. This was the reason, he said, for the stories in the, the Bible that detailed human ageing dropping drastically around about the time of the big of the great flood over a few generations from reported ages of 900 plus prior to the flood down to less than 100 just a few generations after at the time i thought this was interesting and could possibly explain it was a good it was a simple explanation that might be true and it was sort of confirmed by observing that Populations who drank in high altitude areas that drank sort of glacial water lived to very old ages, for example, like the Hunza people. But it wasn't until I had dinner with John last month and heard about his new interest in deuterium depleted water and the amazing healthful health giving effects uh, of drinking deuterium depleted water that I suddenly had a memory of that report I'd heard from Wes Bateman way back in 1990 in Sedona, Arizona all those years ago and I suddenly thought oh my god it might have been true so I've done a little bit of a scientific search and I can't actually find any evidence of um, Antarctic water being um, in fact uh, low in deuterium levels, but we do have the evidence of the high glacial melt being 133 parts per million as, as opposed to 150 parts per million in the general Earth's water supply. So it still remains a question, but I thought it was very interesting, and so John asked me to present my um, thoughts on this, which, which I, um, I think are quite appropriate, and we may find out that it's all true. As I told the plasma group in Pottsville, I think we're discovering all these like these different things, and they're all coming together. And if we're lucky, we might end up sort of extending our age um, quite well. Thanks, Corn. I appreciate that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so I, I, I wanted Corn to talk about those things simply because he and I had dinner one night and I was all excited because of the deuterium stuff, so I'm talking to him about this and he's saying, oh, that, that explains why these guys have 10 years longer in life and I'm, I didn't know what he meant until he told me about overwintering in Antarctica and then, then he went a bit more esoteric on me and talked about, you know, something hitting Earth and, yeah, you do wonder when they say, you know, in the Bible and stuff where why people live for hundreds of years and you don't know what to make of that. Sometimes simple reasons are the best and I think the thing that I like about deuterium, it simplifies a lot of this stuff. John's two-hour presentation can be found on this channel.